our lesson today is a llama. Uh, that's how llama, that how we pronounce it, is pronounced in the Spanish uh, language, llama. Um, and uh, it's a two-part project. Okay, so we're going to take it one step at a time. But I wanted to tell you just a little bit about um, uh, llamas. Um, they are very integral in South America in the culture and everyday living of um, the people of particularly Peru. Uh, and uh, they're very helpful uh, to uh, the people in Peru because they thrive in mountainous regions. And interestingly, uh, the Yamas were integral to the success of the Incan culture because the Incan, Incas lived in the mountains, wanted to plant crops, and obviously planting crops in, in a mountain re mountainous region is um, uh, a tough challenge uh, to pull off because of the weather and the poor soil and that kind of thing. But the Yamas provided fertilizer. Uh, for the crops. And so the Incans uh, people were able to uh, plant crops and grow them successfully. Yamas are related to camels uh, and their, their smaller cousin is called an alpaca. They're about half the size of a, of a yama and um, they're fluffier and they're also not as friendly. They're more skittish uh, than, uh, than yamas. Uh, so uh, I, I wanted to have highlight kind of the importance of the yama to Peruvian culture, as well as put our, our little guy on a background that depicts a Peruvian uh, weaving uh, because that is the, uh, a very important traditional craft uh, for the women in Peru. Um, and they make absolutely gorgeous uh, uh, textiles. Um, they dye uh, their, the, um, the yarn that they're going to be using, the threads. And they make them into these lovely patterned um, blankets and rugs and shawls and, and that kind of thing. And typically the women uh, gather together in the community and dye and, and uh, spin and uh, uh, weave and uh, talk together, sort of like the equivalent of what used to happen here, the quilting circle, right? Um, so, okay, so we're going to start with uh, the yama first. And so you need a piece of paper. And for some of you, I have... I'm going to set this off to the side. Um, I have provided a start to the head uh, because that can be, you know, fairly challenging uh, um, to to get on your paper uh, correctly. And then I also helped out with the eyes. Uh, the eyes of the yama are set on the side, sort of like a horse, so they have very good peripheral vision. Uh, and so we wanted to make sure that our eyes for our yamas are set on the side too. Um, and then they have a very long neck. So it's going to go all the way uh, down uh, to the bottom of our paper. So again, I'm going to draw with a marker so that you can see it. But I want you to draw with your pencil and, uh, and then have an eraser handy in case you need that. So for this, this first part, we're going to draw the yama. We're going to use watercolors to paint the yama. And then we're going to cut out the yama. Okay. Uh, so let's start. We've got our, the, our head started. So let's start with the nose. And we're going to start with just two little ovals that will... Uh, be the nostrils. Okay, so you see it's in the center, but down just a little bit. And then we're going to draw little mountains over our ovals. And then we're going to do kind of an upside down heart shape. 
So don't make this real little. Make it, you know, large enough so that, it, well, I won't say fills up the space here, but um, is, is noticeable because it's the snout coming out. And then we want to do lines here to show that it's coming out towards us. And then we're going to do the mouth. I'm going to make it open a little bit so it gives our, our yama a, a, a friendly sort of expression. Okay, and then we're going to move it up here. There we go, so you can see. And and wait, they have these really cute stick-up ears, okay? So they're kind of round at the ends. They almost look like horns when we're drawing them, but they're kind of rounded like that. And then try to make it the other one, match it as much as you can. Very simple shape. If you want to, after you draw one, if you want to just kind of finger trace over here and put a little line, that will help you get the, uh, the height the same and you know they don't have to be perfectly uh, similar so then we'll do the inside of the ears like this just follow your original lines there we go so now it's looking like a, a llama okay so now we're going to do the neck. And you can put some zigzags on it if you want it to look like it's got some hair. We are going to cut this out, so don't make it too complicated to do that. There we go. All right. So then what you want to do is take your eraser and kind of clean it up. We are going to be watercoloring. So these pencil lines will show through. So spend a little time just... Now I can go add a little bit rougher because I've got the marker. Now if you want to, you can trace your lines with your marker you can use uh, a very thin permanent marker if you would like or you can just use your watercolors and I'll show you how to do that while you're Cleaning up here, I'm going to, I can find my pencil. I'll just use a pen and I'm going to draw this area so I can show you how to do that in a little bit. All right. Okay, so uh, you may use your uh, watercolors in the tray if you would like, or your tube watercolors. Again, I'm going to use tube watercolors because I want to make sure that you can see uh, clearly what I'm doing. 
Now, yamas are, you know, sometimes they're just white. Sometimes they've got some gray on them. Sometimes they're tan. Um, they're not bright colored uh, creatures. So I'm going to use kind of a, what is this called? It's Caucasian flesh tint is what it is. Um, and then I'm going to use to shade some Payne's Gray and Lamp Black. That's if you're using the watercolor tubes. If you've got your, your watercolor set, um, you can use, you know, like the browns and the grays to the blacks here if you'd like. So this is pretty thick coming out of the tube. I obviously don't use this color very much. And so we're going to start up here at the top. Now again, you can trace your 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 uh, yama with a, a black marker if you would like, um, or you can uh, do your line work with watercolors, and I'll show you how to do that. If you choose to do that, we need to... Um, do the background, do the, the fur of the of the yama, and then let it dry before doing the line work. If we do the line work first and then paint over it, it will bleed into the color of the fur. I'm just going to paint all over using my medium brush. I need to make it a little bit darker. It was being a little too light there. You can go back over the areas where you feel like it needs to be a little darker or you've got some white showing through. I've got this little darker streak there that I don't really like, so I'm just taking just a brush with water in it uh, to smooth that out a little bit, spread it out.
Now for the neck, you can use a bigger brush. More water. I'm going to get the smaller brush out here to get up at the top of the neck, but we'll motor through this with, with a bigger brush first in the wide open spaces. Okay, so then I'm going to pick up my littler brush and get up there in those little areas. Okay, so now I'm going to get out my gray and I'm going to start... doing some shading. Now, if you're using the tube watercolors, you can see that it's very dark. Okay, so we want to use quite a bit. It's almost a black. And so we're going to go in the ears. Since that's going to be or shaded. And I'm going to use more water at first to get a lighter tone of the gray, and then I'm going to go back in with less water with my pigment. And that will be darker so I can get some shading. Okay, so I'm going to go and we're going to do wet on wet so it will blend a little bit. I'll do a little bit around the edges. And then we'll blend that in. Okay, so you have some color variation. Again, to get the darker color, oops, overshot it there. Um, you want to use less water. And then if they're not blending, this is starting to dry, so if they're not blending really well, then go back with a little more water to blend it. Okay. So I'm going to pick up some red to do the little mouth. We're going to make it kind of faint. We don't want it to be real bright red. There we go. All right, and now I'm going to use a brown to do some shading. So uh, 
This one is called Raw Umber. So where would I have some shading? I would have shading under the eye, wherever there's going to be shadows, right? Around here, some shading up in here. So I'm going to around the edges. Don't worry, we're going to go back over and blend it in. back with my original background color and then mix those together and I'm gonna blend it in you don't want just lines right so wet on wet technique we'll get we get us where we want to be So you want to work in small areas so that it doesn't really dry out on you too much. Okay, so I need to do some shading over on this side. Down around here. too dry there but you can go in and scrub it just a little bit but I also don't want you to your paper to start falling apart right so we'll go in with a little more shading just play around with this until you get the, the look that you like soften up the lines Now we'll work on the top of the head and the ears. We're doing some shading around the edges. Keeping it subtle because it is the top of the head, so it's not going to be as... There's more light catching it, right? So the, the shading will be much lighter. Then you can go back with your original background. Let me go over that a little bit. Okay, so see how we're starting to look all shady there? All right, so now what we're going to do is do a little bit of shading on the edges of the ears on the inside, particularly down here where it's curved a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now we need to do some shading right around here. And this will be a 
little darker and a little wider because the head is a large shape, right? So it's really going to be throwing off a lot, blocking a lot of the light. And then we'll do some shading on the edges. A little darker up under here. And then we can pick up our big brush again. And go back with our Sorry, I got to painting and I wasn't thinking about what I was, sa was saying. Go back to our original color for the background. You know me, I get focused on, on the painting and I forget to finish a sentence. Really need to work on that. There we go. Now, I'm going to let that dry. And while we are draw letting that dry, we want to either paint or um, take a Sharpie and color in your eyes. It really depends on, you know, if you have um, outlined it in the Sharpie, then it might make sense to do the uh, Sharpie for your eyes. If you have not done that, then you might want to paint it and while it and we'll do this while you're it's drying your watercolors are drying so that we can then go ahead and do some line work and I'll show you how to do that but we have to wait for our paints to dry So you don't want to use a lot of water if you're painting the eye, but you want it to kind of flow off the brush, kind of like ink. Don't, and make sure you don't put your hand on the wet watercolor. There. He's looking pretty cute. Okay, so once your the fur colors are dry, if you want to do the line work with your paint, use a, a nice round brush, skinny round brush. You should have one in your set. And we're going to do the line work over the dried paint like this. And you can do this for the eyes as well. Again, we're waiting for it to dry underneath because we want to keep nice, crisp lines. We don't want any bleeding. If 
starts having trouble coming off your brush nicely, just add just a little bit of water. If you want to practice this on your paper plate or a scrap piece of paper, then go ahead and do that because we're going to make sure that we kind of get the feel of the paint. And I keep dipping it in the water a little bit. There you go. And then after it dries, if any of your uh, pencil lines are showing, you can erase those off and make sure that it's good and dry before you do that. Okay, we're going to take a little break to uh, let this dry nicely, and you can do your line work if you um, if you haven't already, and then we're going to cut, cut them out. All right, so we're all nice and dry here, and to cut it out, the first thing we want to do is get rid of all this excess paper. Set that off to the side. Now it will be easier for us to cut it out. And if you did some, like, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you have some little jigs and jags, just kind of go around the outside of it. When you get up to the head, cut that excess off. It'll be easier to manipulate. Just move the paper more than the scissors. And what I'm going to do is just go around. For the time being, I'm just going to go around those eyelashes. And I'll come back and do use the very tips of my scissors to get into those little crevices. sure you keep your eyes focused on where your scissor is going and then use your other hand to move it around and I'm going to get rid of that cutting off these little scraps just helps your scissors to freely move through the piece. Again, I'm just going to go around the eye and come back later for that. And I'm going to trim this a little bit, but I'm not going to get it because I don't want to risk cutting off the eyelash. So, get as close as we can, but it's no problem. I keep hitting the, the phone, my camera, with uh, my scissors. I think I'm a little bit of a klutz today. And again, we'll just get as much of that white off of there as possible. And I can use the very tips to get that little piece off. Okay, so we've got it all cut out. And what we need to do is, now that it's dried and we've got it cut out, we need to put it under some heavy books or something just to keep it uh, from being all wrinkly and uh, it will be easier to glue down on our background. 
So that is the end of part one. I hope you enjoyed making your yama and we will come back together and do part two next. And that will be the background.